if planet 9 or planet X is out there, it may not be where we think. Well, there are various names for something like this, planet 9, planet X, Nibiru, Wormwood. So if planet 9 is out there, a large mysterious planet lurking at the dark edges of our solar system, it may not be where we thought it might be. Now, we know that a couple of years back, NASA did confirm to us that we have a brown dwarf star at the edge of our solar system. A brown dwarf is somewhere, it's not big enough to be a star, not hard enough to be a star, but it's much bigger than any planet, and that's why they call it a brown dwarf. We have one at the edges of our solar system, which is, of course, not very comfortable for us. Now, according to astronomers searching for the hypothetical Planet 9, Planet X, new information taken into account could mean that its orbit is significantly more elliptical than most recently predicted. The hypothetical Planet 9 made a big entrance in 2016 when astronomers Constantine Baddick and Michael Brown of Caltech published their paper in the Astronomical Journal, and in it they said that uh, their case was for an as-yet-undiscovered planet in the outer reaches of the solar system, and the evidence they said lay in the objects from far beyond the orbit of Neptune. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. These objects, they said, are called tra Extreme Trans-Neptunian Objects, or ETNEOs. They have huge elliptical orbits, and they never cross closer to the Sun than Neptune's orbit at 30 astronomical units, and they swing out farther than 150 astronomical units. So they have very huge elliptical orbits. Vatican and Brown found that these orbits have the same angle at perihelion, the point in their orbit that is closest to the Sun. The astronomers ran a series of simulations and found that the gravitational influence of, of a large planet could cluster the orbits in this way. Since the paper dropped, the theory has become very controversial, with many astronomers finding Planet 9's existence unlikely, but so far we have no firm evidence one way or the other. The most conclusive way the debate will be settled if we find the silvery thing, and the new update from Batigan and Brown could help us try to do that. Their new paper has been accepted into the Astrophysical Journal Letters, and the initial detection of a possible Planet 9 back in 2016 was made based on just two, six, sorry, six extreme trans-Neptunian objects, six ETNEOs. These objects are, after all, very small and very hard to detect. And over time, more ETNEOs have been discovered. And today we know about 19 of them, which means we now have more data to analyze, to calculate the characteristics of the planet. In 2019, the astronomers revised the available information and came to the conclusion that they had gotten a few things slightly incorrect. The mass of the planet, according to their vision, is only five times the mass of Earth, instead of 10, <laughs> it's five times the size of Earth, which is still very, very huge. And um, they had what they initially calculated was 10, and its eccentricity, now elliptical, it is, was lower. And now they've updated those calculations again. They wrote in the po find the, on the Find Planet 9 blog, however, the question we asked ourselves during the height of the pandemic is a different one. Are essentially essential physics missing from our simulations? Through our continued and incessant probing of the model, we have discovered that the answer to this question is yes, their essential physics was missing. Now, their simulations, they said, assumed that any object that moves beyond 10,000 astronomical units from the sun is lost in space. What they weren't taking into account was that the sun was not born in isolation, but probably in a large, heavy, populated star-forming cloud with other baby stars. And under these conditions, the baby solar system would have almost definitely formed an inner section of uh, the Oort cloud. And the Oort cloud, as we know, uh, it's a shell of icy bodies surrounding 
the solar system between 2,000 and 100,000 astronomical units from our sun. The formation of giant planets such as Saturn and Jupiter would have flung debris outwards towards interstellar space, but the gravitational perturbations of passing stars would have pushed them back into the sun's gravitational influence, so they end up forming the inner Oort cloud. We, th we tend to think of the Oort cloud as just sort of hanging there, not doing much of anything, really. But when Battigan and Brown ran a whole bunch of new simulations, taking these physics into account, they found that objects in the inner uh, region of the Oort cloud may indeed move about a bit. Planet 9, however, alters this picture on a qualitative level, the, the researcher said. They said, due to the long-term gravitational pull of Planet 9's orbit, the inner Oort cloud objects evolve on billion-year time cycles, slowly getting re-injected -eject, into the outer solar system. So what happens to them? We have simulations this process accounting for perturbations from the canonical giant planets, Planet 9, passing stars, as well as the galactic tide, and have found that these re-injected inner Oort cloud objects can readily mix in with the senses of distant Kuiper Belt objects and even exhibit orbital clustering. This means that some of the extreme trans-Neptunian objects we have found could in fact have originated in the Oort cloud, which is really cool. However, the team simulations also showed that the clustering of the Oort cloud objects would be weaker than that of the objects that came from the Kuiper Belt closer in. This suggests that a more eccentric orbit for Planet 9 would be better explaining the data, the orbit the researchers found um, and uh, put in their 2019 paper. We don't know exactly how eccentric that orbit might be until more study can be conducted of the clustered objects to determine which of them originated in the inner Oort cloud. But there's a limit to how eccentric the orbit can become before it is no longer consistent with our observations of the outer solar system. Because the hypothetical planet is so far away and so dim, our chances of spotting it are really low, so this information can be used to refine models and stop us looking for it in places it might not be, hopefully leading to a detection of this elusive beast, Planet 9, Planet 10, Nibiru, Wormwood, whatever you want to call it. Even if we never find it, though, the discoveries it has led to have been awesome. The whole bunch of new Jovian moons and super distance potential dwarf planets is nothing to sneeze at. Now, Batikin and Brown's new paper has been accepted to the Astrophysical Journal Letters, and this is on Science Alert. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support.